Here we are going to learn about fuzzy C-means clustering. We know that fuzzy C-means clustering is a type of unsupervised machine learning. There are two types of unsupervised machine learning uh, clustering algorithms. One is the hard clustering. In hard clustering, we are doing K-means or K-medoids. With the help of a K-means or K-medoids, we make hard clusters that this data is part of cluster 2 and this data is part of cluster 1. These clusters are not mixing with one another. In the soft clustering, this fuzzy C means uh, comes into play where there are some data points and we say that this data point has a probability that it is po uh, 0.97 or 97 percent it is probable to be part of this uh, cluster but there is a 0.03 percent probability that this data point is part of the second cluster. Similarly, there is one data point which has a probability that it belongs 47 percent to this cluster but there is also a probability that 53 percent chances are there that this data point can belong to this cluster. So when the data points belong to a cluster with certain probability which we can also call the membership value then that type of clustering is called soft clustering and it comes in the domain of fuzzy C means. Okay let's solve an example to understand how does we actually uh, do this fuzzy C means clustering. So first of all in the first step you have to initialize the membership table. If you are given with these data points you have to write down that what is the probability of uh, for all these data points that they belong to cluster number one or they belong to cluster number two. As you can see that probability of this data point one three belonging to cluster number one is 80 percent and 20 percent is the probability that this data point belongs to cluster number two. In the second step we will calculate the centrioids. This is the formula for calculating the centrioid. Uh, the centrioid uh, it depends on the value of mu, uh, uh, xk and mu in the denominator where uh, this nk is ranging from 1 to n, n means your number of data points. This mu is actually the membership value, the percentages. xk are your data points and this m is your fuzziness parameter generally it is taken as 2 it depends on the number of clusters so in this example uh, we will calculate the centrioid value for the first component for the first centrioid so we are considering the uh, there are two components in each data point so first of all we will consider the first components of all the data points and we are uh, calculating uh, the value for the first uh, cluster right now. So 0 0.08, we will take the percentages values only from the first cluster, 0 0.08, 0 0.7, 0 0.2 and 0 0.1, we will place a square over them and uh, the first component of the data points 1. 2, 4 and 7. 1, 2, 4 and 7 are multiplied. In the denominator, we are again taking these uh, percentages with the square signs. And this is my centrioid value, uh, first component value. Now I am going to calculate for the second component of the first centrioid. So for the second component, we will take these second components of the data points and the same percentage values are multiplied with the second components 3, 5, 8 and 9 3, 5, 8 and 9 and there is always a square on the percentages so uh, now we will calculate for the second centrioid first component so now i is equals to 2 and j is equals to 1 so for the second centrioid we will take these percentages not the above percentages and again we are taking first component so first components are 1 2 4 and 7 and these are the percentages and similarly for the second centrioid second component i is equals to 2 and j is equals to 2 so now we are taking these second components 3 5 8 and 9 and the percentages from the second cluster so the answer is 8.215 in this way we have calculated the, um, the the centrioid values so once the centrioid values have been calculated 
now we will calculate the distance between the data points with the centroids so we can use the euclidean distance formula where the centroids are 1.568 4.05 and 5.35 8.215 so the distance of first data point 13 from the centroid c1 is 1 minus 1.5 this one minus 1.5 and 3 minus 4.05 so this is the distance similarly distance of first data point from centroid 2 is 1 minus 5.35 3 minus 8.215 so these are the two distances where d i j i is the data point and j is the centroid in this way we will calculate the distance of second data point for from first centroid uh, second data point from second centroid third data point from first centroid third data point from second centroid fourth data point from first centroid and fourth data point from second centroid on the basis of these distances whichever distance is small you allocate that cluster to that data point all right so from here this data uh, distance is small from here this distance is small from here this distance is small to so c1 c1 c2 c2 are allocated to these clusters it means that data points 1 2 have joined cluster c1 and data points 3 4 have joined uh, centroid c2 now the next step is updating the membership values we already had some percentages on which we said that uh, the data points had the percentages of belonging to their clusters but now we are going to calculate new percentage values so the formula which is used for calculating the percentage value is mu ki uh, which is a summation of dki over d kj and 1 over m minus 1 raised to the power minus 1 where k is your data point i is your probability uh, which is revised j is the number of uh, clusters so for point number one new membership values are so first of all you have to make this table for you so that uh, the distances you have to write for you or you can see from the back page your distance is d11 d12 d21 d22 they are going to be used so for the first mu value for first data point um, the membership value of the first data point is calculated as d11 so here you will get d11 because k is 1 and you are calculating the distance from the first uh, centroid so it is d11 and here again you will have d11 but in the uh, numerator you will have d11 and d11 d12 because j is ranging from 1 to 2 you have two clusters so you will uh, there will be two terms in this equation first term will be for first data point and first cluster and the second term will be for first data point and uh, second cluster on the numerator you are doing uh, one time for only one data point and one centroid so first of all uh, the numerators will remain same so d11 is 1.2 and d12 is 6.79 so this is the membership value that is going to replace this percentage because we are uh, doing it for the first data point and uh, we are calculating the new membership with respect to the first uh, cluster first centroid okay for the uh, data point number one new membership value for the second centroid this position so now it will be d12 and uh, d11 square will always be there because in the place of this uh, m you have 2 so 2 minus 1 is uh, 1 so this will become 1 over 1 but this square can go outside or it can stay inside so there will always be a square sign okay so d12 uh, d12 and in the de new denominator this is for the distance of the first data point with respect to first cluster and this is for the second cluster so the number of 
uh, values or terms in this equation will always be equal to your number of clusters if there are two clusters there will be two terms and then the new denominator one for first time you are doing for the first cluster and second time you are doing for the second cluster but in the numerator it always depends at which data point you are considering and which centroid you are considering so right now we are dealing with the second centroid we are replacing this membership value so we have placed it 1 2 so distance of 1 2 is value is taken from 6.79 here and placed here 6.79 and this is 1 1 and 6.79 so these squares are divided and then it, the inverse is taken so the value is 0 0.03 the remaining membership values are also calculated uh, 2 1 so you have 2 1 2 1 2 1 and 2 2 a revising probability number 1 for the data point 2 data point 2 okay and uh, then mu 2 2 revising probability number 2 for data point 2 so this 2 is representing data point 2 and this is your probability number 2 or in other words you can say that from centroid 2 so it is 2 2 2 2 and it is 2 1 2 2 okay so the answer is 0 0.05 now revising probability number 1 for the data point 3 so it is data point 3 and it is probability number 1 so uh, 3 1 3 1 and 3 1 3 2 so answer is 0 0.08 now revising probability number 2 for data point number 3 so this is data point number 3 and this is probability number 2 so 3 2 3 2 and it is 3 1 3 2 first cluster second cluster and now revising probability number 1 for the data point number 4 so it is 4 1 4 1 4 1 4 2 so the answer is point zero six. and probabil revising probability number 2 for the data point number 4 so it is 4242414142.94. So in this way, the new membership table has been generated, and the old membership table was like this. So you can see that uh, these values have been changed. Similarly, these values have also been changed. Okay. So what is our analysis for data point one? The old probability was point eight. That is that it belongs to cluster number one now it is 0.97 so on for all the other data points the probability values have been changed okay we will repeat the step two to four until constant membership values are achieved difference is less than the tolerance of 0 0.01 so if the difference between this change 0 0.97 and 0 0.8 is only 0 0.01 then we will say that okay the membership values are no more changing but when uh, they are changing and the tolerance is uh, not 0 0.01 it is less uh, it is more than that so it is not within the tolerance value so we will keep repeating the same steps we will keep uh, calculating the new uh, membership values and you know that for calculating the new membership values what you have to do you have to calculate the centroids once again so with these new membership values you will again um, use the same formula of calculating uh, this formula of calculating the centroid and you will again place the new mu values and you will again calculate the centroid and once the centroid will be calculated then you will again calculate all the uh, distances and with the distances you will again calculate the mu's and you will again make the mu table so i hope the uh, steps of fuzzy series clustering are clear so do write it down in the comments section and do like and subscribe to the video thank you allah Hafiz.